we're ready to open this up. This peels open quite easily just with a knife. And all our parts will be inside. And we can just discard the plastic, we don't need that. Now regardless of which scale freight crate you're building, they pretty much are all going to have the same parts inside. Uh, the, we'll always package it with the lid on top and then inside will be the bubble wrap cradles. We won't need those until we actually use the freight crate later when it's done. I'll set those aside. And here are all the parts. These have all been laser cut out of hardboard. Very durable, nice and strong, and very precisely cut. So everything will just snap together quite easily. So I'm going to separate the parts out. Um, these are the pieces for the key lock. We won't need those until later on in the build. So we'll set those aside. These are all the dividers. Depending on the scale freight crate box you're using, there could be eight or 12 of these. I'm just going to set those aside. Again, we don't need those until the end of the build. More parts for the key locks. Over there. This is our glue cleaning tool. You'll see me use this shortly. And the parts for the lid will have the etching on it that looks like a crate. And we're going to be building the lid first, so those are the parts I'm looking for. So I'm just going to gather those up. The base parts are these, and I'm just going to set those aside. We're going to build the uh, bottom half in the second step. These are also two parts for the lid, and finally the very bottom. I'll set that over here. So here's our lid. Now we're going to build this with this side facing down onto the table. I'm building on just a standard workbench here. It's got the nice um, Arbrite coating on it. Uh, I'm going to be getting some glue on this as I'm working, so I want to use a surface that I can easily wipe off uh, with a damp cloth that I've got prepared already here. Um, so you don't want to be working on something that's going to be damaged by a little bit of glue and moisture. So we're going to take the sides, lay them out with the engraved side down, like so. And that's kind of looking at an exploded view of the lid, and we're getting ready to uh, glue this together. Now, we need to apply glue only on the tabs. So when I say a tab, anything that's protruding out. So I'm going to be putting some glue all along these tabs here, and along these tabs on the bottom, and along the tabs on the side, and then assembling it like that. That way we'll have glue on all the surfaces that are going to come in contact with each other. Just going to run a bead of glue along these tabs like so. Just a little bit there. And down here. And then I'm going to do the same on the tabs on the sides. So you can put them on the short tabs over here. And then all the way along the bottom here like so. And then also on the side here. three sides glued up and we're ready to assemble these and you just simply put them together like that. See how I just kind of lined them up on the bottom and then folded it in place. And the tabs will all interlock together like so. Now, I'm not going to stop and clean up any glue at this point. I want to get the other two sides on first and then I'm going to go and clean all the glue that's uh, dribbling out from some of these glue joints. I like to do this all in one shot because you don't want to leave the glue sitting too long on the outside of the box where it's oozing out um, because it will set up very quick and it can be a little bit more difficult to get off. So I like to just get the parts glued together as fast as possible and then do a quick cleanup afterwards. Now I'm going to assemble this piece onto the short side and then the final long side. So easily it all just slides together. Those tabs are very precisely cut. There's just enough clearance in them so everything goes together fairly easily. So you only need to hold it for 5-10 seconds on each joint. If it's not sitting tight just put a little bit of pressure on it and it'll set up very quick. Now you can see on the inside there's some glue has leaked 
inside. And that's what this tool is for. It's just this little hockey shape piece of hardware. And you can just slide it down like that, wipe off the extra glue. And I do that on all the inside corners. Like so. And that takes all the excess glue from the inside. Now the little bit of extra that's inside, I just clean up with a damp cloth. Now I'm going to take the lid, flip it over, and I want to clean the rest of this glue off. And you can see that I've gotten some of the glue onto the surface of the table. That wipes off fairly easily. Now this, this glue can leave marks on the, uh, on the box. See where it's got some is leached out. You want to clean that off. If you don't, it's going to look ugly. So I just take the damp cloth and go down all the corners. I'll take the box and I'll let it hang over the edge of the table so I can get the corner, the exterior, the extreme corners nice and clean. And down here, there's a little bit of residue left over on the surface from the uh, smoke from the laser engraver and that wipes off quite easily too, just with the damp cloth. There, there, and there. And then we'll just set that aside and let it all dry up. This will cure up quite nicely. So there's our, our box inside and out. Like I mentioned before, I'm not worried too much about those glue joints. They will completely disappear when the, uh, when the glue dries. So we'll set that lid aside and we'll start assembling the, uh, the base. Now the base goes together in a similar manner to the, to the, uh, to the lid. Uh, there's four sides in the bottom. Um, the bottom of the base is uh, the part that will have these etchings on it. So we want to make sure that that's facing down when we put all our side pieces on. Uh, this is a little different from the, from the lid in that there isn't a notch on the bottom. There are actually pockets. And this assembles into those pockets like so there. And that creates space on the bottom of the box for our key lock mechanism. So assembling this, uh, same thing, apply some glue along all the tabs, all the way around, and then we're going to apply the glue all the way down along this area here, in, in between each of these pockets. And then in between the pockets on the long side. Okay, now we can assemble these, slide the side on like so, and then the opposite adjacent side I guess and lock everything together like that. There. You see that everything is joined up nice and we'll go back in here afterwards and clean out the excess glue. So now put some glue on here and glue the other two sides on. Like so. Okay now I'm just putting a little pressure on all the corners, make sure everything sets up quick and now we'll go in here and clean this out. And on the inside I like to clean it a little bit more carefully because you will see that. Um, although this glue does pretty much go invisible when it dries. In here we've got a little bit of glue in there. We need to clean that out. We can use our glue cleaner tool and just get it in there and pull it out. You want to make sure there's no blobs of glue in there. A little smear won't matter because it will evaporate when it dries. Because in this part is uh, our key lock and it has to be able to move. If we've got a big gob of glue in there then it's hard to, uh, hard to make it work. Now we have our bottom glued together and we're going to flip it over and work on our two key locks. So we're going to work from the outside in towards the center, putting, adding our parts. Uh, the first part is this long keeper. And you can see there's a, an etching on the bottom of the box shows where all this has to be assembled. So we're going to put a very small amount of glue along this edge. The reason for the small amount of glue is you don't want it to squeeze out into the area where the lock part has to move, otherwise you'll glue everything together. You can see I should put three really small blobs of glue. And then we push it down into the corner. And if you do happen to see any 
glue come out along this edge, you have to get in there with a cloth and clean it off. Next, we put the key, that is this little part here. And this is the part that has to move back and forth. Um, it goes in the short end first, through there, and then you bend this down and push into the other end, and this will just snap into place there. Now we're good. So we got the two parts in, and now we're going to add the far third and final keeper that goes here. And again, very small amount of glue. I'm going to put it on the actual part this time. Here, and then a little bit there. And then I'm going to smear it on as well. Keeps it from oozing out when I put it in place. And I'm going to put it in place and then slide it in towards the key, like so. Because if we put it straight down and squeeze on it, you'll get some glue oozing in and you'll glue the whole thing solid. And then just test, make sure it's moving freely. It should move very easily. Moving it back and forth will cause this to sit itself uh, in a proper position. Plus, if you got any glue in there, you'll know by the way it feels. If you do get some glue in there, don't panic. As it's curing, just keep moving this back and forth, and it'll be fine. The last step is to put the key lock cover on, and this just simply glues in place like so. Once more, very little bit of glue. This is where you can end up gluing the whole works shut if you're not careful. So you can see where I've I've put it all the way up against the edge there and just a very small amount here and then I'm going to smear it around a little bit just to make sure that when I put this down I'm not squeezing glue in and I'm going to slide it in and then press it in yeah, like so. Like that and like that. Put some pressure on it. Get rid of that little bit of excess glue there and this is moving nice and free. If you do happen to get a little bit of glue on there and this is moving a little stiff just keep moving it back and forth every minute or so while the glue is curing and after two or three minutes it'll be fine if you do glue it solid no matter what you cannot move it you can pry it off because we use a very little amount of glue sand it down a little bit to clean off any glue residue and then re-glue it again so we got one side done we're going to go down here and do the other side and it's moving nice and free we didn't glue it up Okay, check this end, yeah, it's still moving, and it's still moving, so no glue. If we had got a little bit of glue in here, this might be a little stiff, but you can just put it on the side and put a little pressure on it, it'll break free and move nice and free after that. So now all that's left on this bottom half is to put in our dividers, and that's what all these are here. A little bit of glue on the bottom here, and there. I like a little on the side here and here, none here, and then I put a little bit on this side here, Maybe a little bit more there. And now when this slides together, all the surfaces will have some glue on them. Let me just slide them into the pockets like so, push it down in place, and then clean up whatever excess glue is on there. You can use the glue cleaning tool if you want to get down in the corners. I don't really worry about it because this, when this dries up, it's down in the bottom. You won't see it and uh, it won't interfere with anything. So now we just work our way down and, and glue all these in place. Okay. All the uh, dividers are in place. Now we're just going to let that sit for a little while until the glue dries up completely going to return to our lid now and you'll notice that there's two little rectangles engraved on each end and then there will be two little rectangular parts like this. These get glued into here and this allows the boxes to become stackable because this little protrusion will now lock inside this little opening in our key lock. So I'm just going to glue that in place. A little bit of white glue on it like so and just line it up inside that rectangle. Accuracy counts here. You want to get it nice and close. Same on this end. And then we're going to test with the bottom, make sure that it's all fitting together before the glue is completely cured. Because that 
right now it's still a little bit forgiving. We can move these things around if they're not exactly in the right location. So we'll take the bottom and we'll just line up the corners like so and make sure that it sits down nice and tight all the way around. If it has, now we know that those little tabs are in the right place. So I'm just going to carefully lift this straight up off of here, set that aside, and then we're going to let all this dry. Okay, the glue's nice and cured, and we can see how well this all fits together for us. We're going to slide the two halves together, simply open up the keys. This is the open position here, and here, and just slide it from the back, and then slide the lid on all the way down. And this works best sitting on a flat surface, because then it's much easier to close it up like that. And now you can carry everything like that, and you don't have to worry about it falling open. To open it, you just slide these keys out like so. Now, you don't want to be flipping the box over when it's full of train cars, but you can do that just by hooking your fingers onto the keys and taking the lid off like so. Now, to use the box to store and move our train cars, we use the bubble wrap cradles that are included with the kit. These are uh, cut to size to match the, uh, the pocket in the freight crate that you're using. The car is simply set onto the cradle like so, and you pick it up like that. That way you're not handling the car. And it just slides into one of the pockets of the creek crate, like that. And you fill it up with all your cars, and these can just tuck in there. So now you've got a nice, secure way to store and move the, your, your equipment around. Like that.